you guys want to do a quick documentary react and then uh, the giveaway? Or giveaway and documentary? It's a, I'm pretty sure it's a quick one. All right, we're going to do doc, then giveaway. This doc is about Genghis Wan? Oh, sh so this is a melee one. This is when I, this is when I played Fox in tourney, and I got top eight of Genesis. Uh, Genesis Black. <laughs> the reason why this, this documentary is quirky is because uh, when I was in uh, NorCal, there was an event called Genesis Black that I entered last second and did commentary at. And uh, this event, um, I wanted it to be a relaxing event. Usually I go try hard for every single Smash event like ever. But uh, in this case, I just wanted to try something different, right? So I ended up just uh, going to this event and deciding I was only going to play uh, Fox, Falco, and Sheik in this moniker called Genghis Wan. And uh, I ended up getting top eight there. With my only this is this is like basically my only melee tournament result ever. Not playing Puff at a major, and uh, it's pretty interesting. It should come as no surprise to anyone in the melee community when I say that Team Liquid's Hungry Box is really, really, really freaking good. I mean, he's been the number one player on SSBM's top 100 ranking since 2017. Why, he's thank one you. of the only Jigglypuff players in the world able to win on a consistent basis. And speaking of winning, of the 19 tournaments he attended this year, he placed first at 12 of them. 12! That's not a 63% win yes. game rate. That's yes. a 63% yes. win tournament rate. Of the seven ass here. tournaments where Hungrybox didn't get first, one was a seventh place finish at Genesis Black. Damn, I was so skinny. Hold on. Hold on. Seven tournaments where Hungrybox didn't. I think I was skinny, or maybe I had a nice haircut there. What do you guys think? Get first. One was a seventh place finish at Genesis Black, a one-day 175 entrant regional tournament over in Pomona, California. But something was different about this event. Something felt off. Oh yeah, Hbox wasn't playing Puff. <laughs> He also didn't enter under his usual tag. This guy is not Hungrybox. This is Genghis Wan. Genghis Wan! For this entire tournament, he played mostly Fox and Sheik. And he got 7th place. How the f**k did he get 7th place? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what happened. This is Genesis Black. Uh, there was over 200 entrants, I believe, to this tournament. And it was stacked. Like, it had, like, almost the entire, or half of the entire, uh, of California power ranking. So, um, yeah. How the fuck did I get to the place, chat? Spookifier. This is like, Orlando Man was like a... I used to enter as Orlando Man. I'm sorry. My cousin, Hector, would enter as Orlando Man in Locals and inspired me to create Heck as 1. So the TLDR of this whole situation oh, was that... Oh, damn, that pop-off is crazy. Oh, my God. God. Up at this event. Oh, he my God. Hbox entered Genesis Black as Genghis 1. And for the Forgot entire tournament, that. he played a secondary characters, which were predominantly Fox and Sheik. We'll be pulling some examples from a couple of Juan's Fox sets in Top 32 leading up to Top 8. Juan versus Null and Juan versus Eddie Mexico. Juan Sheik saw some of the spotlight in his set versus Lucky, where he was sent to losers, but he did take Lucky to Game 5, which is still super impressive. Oh yeah, it was What's Game 5 at um, Hbox Smash Con. These matchups is how similar they all look, even though his list of opponents here included two Foxes and a Luigi. Juan plays these sets almost exactly how he'd play Puff, a Back big punish style of gameplay with a heavy emphasis on reacting to his opponents. The only difference is, well, of course, his character. One of the big benefits on Juan's side when he does switch characters is that the way that he'll play defense won't change all that much. How you use your character's specific tools to avoid offense may vary across the cast, sure, but your game sense and matchup knowledge doesn't suddenly disappear when you switch to a secondary. Dude, I swear, like, right here, I don't know if he's gonna talk about this, but I literally took two games off Lucky's Fox, and, like, pretty, basically top two Fox in the entire West Coast. Or California, at least, I guess. Or maybe he was. I'm not, I'm not sure where the rankings are now. With Sheik on Yoshi's story, just by doing hard reads. But my tech skill, my tech just reactions with Sheik is actually really, really bad. Um, I did a lot of puff approaches just in a different character. Sheik's back air is sick. Fox's back air is sick. Falco's back air is sick. And so I'd incorporate that in a lot of ways. And 
Once you're actually it was pretty funny. comboed in melee, only a few things matter. Your position relative to the stage or the blast zone, your DI, and how you try to get out of the combo to reestablish neutral, or at the very least, remove yourself from disadvantage. Speaking of DI, Wan's SDI is actually unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Danger. <laughs> The downers, though. <laughs> I was mashing, dude. Come on. Counter Magic Games <laughs> Tafo sums this up pretty well on Twitter, saying Hbox's puff knowledge transfers into his other characters with good aerial drifts, solid vertical spacing, immaculate SCI slash defense, keen awareness of enemy character limitations with respect to spacing, and back air. Almost God, everything so is doing can be looked at through the lens of a puff player. He's spamming Fox Bear, he's aerial drifting like a madman, and he's picking his spots near perfect every time. It's incredibly refined game sense under the guise of play that almost looks like he's figuring his character out as he goes, <laughs> which can kind of look sloppy at times, but don't be fooled, it's just also insanely fucking good. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some Hbox plays that almost come out of nowhere and don't even look like they make sense, but when it comes to a player like Hbox, when it looks Looks like he's taking a gamble or a guess or figuring it out as he goes. It's mostly just a much higher level of game sense that I'm certainly not capable of reaching as a player. So I will say that I've because I'd never entered a major with those characters, I actually was figuring it out as I went along. And there it is. Oh, wow. Esam's hair. Thank you for the tier one. <laughs> I was actually figuring it out as I went along. Um and uh but i was playing these characters a lot <laughs> while while i was uh you know warming up i, I would play them on that play all the time i would play a, a bunch of these characters but sitting down at a tournament having that pressure on you i was like shit i guess i should try some up tilts and some back airs and see what happens he already has a strong read on what his opponent wants to do before they even do anything and if he's not quite there on the first guess, it's noted and it's used as data to make the following guesses more and more precise. Pog. Let's look at Juan's first stock versus Null as an example. Null is the 11th ranked player on the SoCal Melee. Number 11 in SoCal. He's taken a number of pretty notable wins, including some over Captain Face Roll, Fiction, and West Balls. So while his bigger wins may not be on floaty players, Null's playing a Fox Ditto here versus Juan, a matchup he's certainly comfortable in. Null hits an unsafe up smash on Juan's shield, and Juan wave dashes out of shield into a grab. Juan hits a pretty free up throw up smash, and instead of pressuring off stage, he, he just broke stands this down, huh? and waits for Null's option. Null illusions to the side platform, which lets Juan tack on more damage via a bear, and Null hits the tech on the platform, which allows him to grab the ledge. Again, Juan just waits, this time around Null's get up roll range, and uses a couple up tilts. Oh my the god. First, which would cover the roll from the ledge, and the Did second I hit in this? anticipation of an aggressive option to regain stage control. Juan double jumps and Null drifts so far right that the only move Juan can connect with is, is a fair. fair. Juan falls off the right platform and doesn't even try to use a second aerial to extend the sequence, choosing again to wait for Null to exhaust a resource. Null uses a jump and tries to fall down with an up air to contest the stage, but Juan punishes with a second fair. Null is now without a jump and is forced to either Firefox or Illusion to return to stage. He elects the former and Juan charges an F smash to try to cover the straight ahead and sweet spot options. Null rolls high and resets neutral with slight disadvantage. After a short skirmish, Juan knocks Null off the left side of battlefield and is in edge guard position for a second time. The backer drops. Again, it. Juan doesn't overextend and he just waits for Null to return to stage. And Null backer dashes and Juan bears him off the right side back as his ability ends. Here, Juan faints to the ledge to scare Null away from the sweet spot and double jump back airs to cover a straight ahead firefox. But Null just misses the ledge on his angle, which results in a lost stock. Okay, Everything all right. about this sequence felt like it had layers. Juan plays patiently to allow his opponent to make mistakes and he up takes up note of any bad habits that fair. may be forming. Drop Here, down, fair. Yo, that fair was actually sick. Null, opting for the second fair? Options multiple times. The early allusion to side platform, the wave dash into Juan's second up tilt, the bear on Null's ledge dash. Everything on Juan's side is calculated and controlled, even when he's playing Fox. It's like Juan just knows how players can react when they get antsy, so all he has to do is whiff punish accordingly. And in the situations where he can't punish his opponent, Juan literally just waits until another opportunity presents itself. Again, it looks like a guess, but it all builds on itself to create the outplay. Maybe it's not the most clean Fox play, and it's certainly not that traditional for the character, but like we said in our last episode on Mango, there's absolutely nothing wrong with going for the safe, not flashy option. 
It's this style of regimented gameplay which allows Hbox to translate his puff knowledge to a higher tempo character like Fox, and it's his discipline and mental game which gives him the edge in these scenarios. I th and that's bubble theory. I think this style of bait and punish helps him immensely when he transitions to a less familiar character for a tournament setting since he can rely on strong neutral yeah and i think going for those weird options there leads going for those weird options the there's one plays best when he can pick his opponent's mistakes dude th this 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 if i would have lost this i probably would have lost the rank one uh this is game five and this is like a three-stock comeback apart and make them two stock their move selections he considers Roll. his place to <gasps> white out, existing to highlight his opponent's errors and punish them off reaction. However, this playstyle can become tough to sustain when his opponents minimize their mistakes. If you make an error, I fix it, or I mark it out every single time. I highlight your error and I punish you for it. Um, but I always say, if my opponent makes no errors, I can't beat them. So it's, it's never about what I'm doing. I play always off my opponent. I they determine whether they lose or not i just i'm there to give them the w or take the l <laughs> uh that still is true to this day i think even an ultimate if you make no mistakes i can't beat you because well mainly especially i'm i whiff no no i like when you whiff i will get a grab i will get an up till i'm gonna get a huge hit on you and it's gonna cost you a lot um because i when people play against me the fact that puff is a menacing threat in the game People get nervous and they'll do tactics that they don't mean to, or they'll approach me in an unsafe way. And I know how to like just be out of your reach to punish you for it. Um, but like when a puff is like on hot fire, it's just like, what am I going to punish? Puff can't be the aggressor towards Fox. A lot of these characters, you know, that's why so many of these new players who are really really good now make it that much more difficult because they optimize so many approaches. It doesn't really seem like he cares that much about percents either when he's on Fox, which, according to some Fox mains, is arguably one of the most important things to pay attention to when you're playing Fox. But there's still some great general decision making going on here regardless, which carries him throughout the set. Take this up smash, for instance. Wan Just go for it. Null goes for a Just go for it. After missing the tech here. Hbox slightly charges an up smash and just lets it rip. Now, some Fox mains may assume that wouldn't kill here, but let's just examine this decision a bit more. Our netplay gurus in the comments would be right in saying that an up smash would have almost no shot of killing here, if it were uncharged. I mean, Null would have to hold all the way left for an uncharged hit to KO him off the left side. But let's see exactly how long he charges this up smash for. Fox's up smash charge frame begins on frame two. He so broke this down here for so hard. Assuming Null doesn't DI the hit, this charge window just barely misses a guaranteed kill at 80%. However, if Hbox held the charge for just three more frames, it would be a guaranteed kill at almost all trajectory DI angles, except for a few angles around left diagonal down and left diagonal up. But even these survival DI angles would put Null in an unfavorable position as we saw in the remainder of the sequence. Now, I'm not quite... Okay. That's true. I think right there, even if I wasn't aware of what percent... Because I wasn't aware of what percent Fox up smash kills Fox. I wasn't aware at all. In fact, I'm not aware of too many percent things in Melee, apart from, like, specific up throw up air stuffs, up, up throw up air stuffs, and certain ways... And the percents that Puff dies from up throw up air from Fox. Um, I usually feel it out and play it by the feel of, like, the hits. And I can tell by how, how stunned your character is whether or not something is guaranteed. I've always played like that. Um, but, uh, right here, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was going to kill. But I knew for the fact that it's a really solid punish that I can get a second hit off of no matter what. So, yeah, to me, that was the best option. Quite sure if Hbox would have known that an up smash held for 14 frames would kill a fox on battlefield at 80% with most DI choices, so maybe it wasn't completely intentional. But regardless of whether or not Juan knew how close that up smash would have been from ending the game, I think this speaks volumes to Juan's capability as a player. If we look at his usual Jigglypuff pick, we'll see interactions like these all this? the time, where it's close enough that the interaction will either result Yo, in a disgusting. Box or time, where it's close enough that the I got. I gotta get back to my melee roots. I, when I when I 
When I look at my combos, I'm like, wow, it's really hard, and I see it. I realize, damn, I haven't played melee in a while. Interaction will either result in complete advantage to age. I gotta, I gotta get back to this. Just enough advantage. Back to work. Still able to pick the pieces up later on. This wasn't even the only time in this very sequence where Juan takes lines that Do are. You guys want a melee stream? Whether or not he'll get the kill. Just after the up smash, Juan baits Null into a falling aerial and catches him with an up air, which at this positioning actually. Are we playing melee on Thursday? SDI from Null to live. Then Null gets whacked with a forward smash at 126, which is also a guaranteed kill if Null doesn't DI the hit at all. And then Juan finally cleans up the stock with a ledge jump back air, which could just as easily set up for another opening, even if Juan got the weak hit here. A good parallel to this is how Hbox elects to edgeguard Marth as Jigglypuff, and we've seen this specifically in a few sets versus Zane, where Hungrybox mixes up Get his edgeguards on a Marth that returns to stage by using Sing into a follow-up rather than just a straight-up So play. sick. That's ultimate shit. This can come down to just a risk versus reward breakdown, where the risk of missing the rest and being punished far outweighs the eventual reward Hbox will get in taking the stock. He knows that even if he messes up, situations like this <gasps> still put him in advantage state, and he'll still be able to get the stock with enough attempts. Under the right circumstances, Juan's up smash could have killed Null outright, but it instead put him in a favorable position to take the stock after just a few more execution tests. And to be honest, a few more execution tests don't really matter all that much as long as you don't get punished for it. And with defense as strong as hungry boxes, that doesn't happen too often. I also just I would say another reason that I started playing secondary is just to understand the character a bit more that I was facing all the time. And I realized that um, when I started playing Fox and Sheik and Falco, I realized, damn, Fox is broken. Um, and so I used that to my advantage. And I got top eight. I just want to comment on the neutral Juan played right before this up smash real quick. Like, Juan bears null five times before. Look how good his bear is. That's it. I, I have no analysis for that. Just Just bear, I guess. But speaking of bear, we also see Genghis Wan use large hitboxes. Look at this. Bear, coupled with what can Luigi do? Control a Look at this. Of space, and what can he do? To incredible effect in his set versus Eddie Mexico. IBDW comments on this in an analysis of this set, but Luigi fundamentally has no aerial mobility, so Eddie is limited to approaching from the ground. Cody comments that Juan plays this matchup as Fox very appropriately by shielding and preventing the. I'm not saying I had other intentions, but I will say a melee Juan's stream would be sick. Great here as well by essentially invalidating Luigi's Inferno ten. Options. But possibly most importantly, Thank you for the some of the ways that Juan elects to edge guard a Luigi are insanely smart, and we can look at this stock as oh, an example. Okay, Juan this is actually one of the sickest things I've ever done in a tournament ever. Look at this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Walt explain it knocks Eddie Mexico off the right side of Fountain of Dreams with a traded back air from center. Eddie begins the recovery with a fireball to cover the ledge, but Juan turns around, light shield, and slides to ledge. He's essentially using a Marth killer I'm to turn so Eddie's decision sick. to projectile against him, and it's insanely smart because with I had, exhausting a jump relatively in line with the ledge, I had no idea this would work. Options to successfully recover. But it felt in right. Fact, almost every it felt right. He does have at this point can be scouted and responded to. A missile attempt would probably just kill him, but Juan can shine it. An air dodge possibly brings Eddie back to stage, but at severe disadvantage. Trying to aerial the ledge won't. This is not going to make sense to a lot of people. I was playing Fox for three hours before we competed in this tournament. So my Fox was already feeling really warm. My hands and must remember were really, really good. When you play so much of a character to warm up and you're already like a professional, you're like one of the best players in the world, at anything, right? Not just melee. I believe you have a game sense and you enter a flow state. Um, and the flow state is, is just crazy. You start remembering things that might work. You feel things out so, so often and you're like, okay, what feels familiar to me here? Because remember, I played Fox a shit ton on net play and against Crunch and to warm up. And so your your fingers start almost experimenting, you know, to see what the options are because you're not familiar with what's, what's, go, what's going on. And so the muscle memory sometimes takes over and creates these really cool avenues. And this was this was purely, I think, just my muscle memory taking over. It was just like, this feels right, so I'm going to try to go for it work and we'll put eddie too low to recover it was it wasn't like he just gets him hit or edge guarded it wasn't active thought right it was the passive thought you know like the like the unconscious mind i think there's like two minds right conscious unconscious that was just the unconscious mind or the sub subconscious and he has so much time to do it with how he set up his positioning at the ledge not unconscious <laughs> I also really like the small turnaround Juan does before light shielding the fireball. Now, I know you need to be facing towards the stage to Marth Killer and grab the ledge, but I think the implication of Juan putting his back to Eddie says a lot about how he uses tricky movement to oh disguise multiple Oh my god. Options. 
Again, we see this a ton when HBox is playing Puff in a combination of Empty Hops, Tomahawks, and Super Ambiguous Aerial Drift to make his opponent think he's committing to a single option, when in all reality he has a few concepts set up and ready to go. This was a really fun tourney, uh, Mango's Birthday Bash. I actually almost completed one of the sickest losers run of my entire life here, but uh, I ran out of steam. Um, but you know, when I'm playing, when I'm playing Puff Fox, the same thing applies, right? I've played the matchup so many times. Like when you think about it, I, in a, in a, I mean, I am, if there's an authority on playing the Jigglypuff Fox matchup in the world, it's me. I'm the one out of 7 billion who knows this shit, uh, apparently the best cause I, I perform the best at it, but it's the result of so, so many years and years and years of constantly constantly grinding the various situations knowing what will and won't work and like getting used to everything you know what i mean it's like it's like when you're building a program or when you're when you're building like um an ai uh it's kind of like you want to present it with as much data as as possible just cram it with data that way it gets more and more and more and more familiar and this, to me, was more of a brute force sort of thing. I brute forced every single situation by playing the game so damn often where my body and my fingers are just like, okay, I'm never going for this again, or I'm always going for this again. And the few times where neutral matters and the mix-ups happen, you just go for the things that are smart. And so you make, you make, you make, the, uh, you, you make the conscious decisions based upon all that data that you had back in the day. The best example I can think of off the top of my head is Hbox's empty I miss melee. around grab. What a and beautiful it's also game. One where he uses his character's orientation to force his opponent into mistakes. Hbox will tend to land with his back facing his yep. opponent, which tends to heavily suggest a falling aerial. So his opponent will shield in preparation for the hit, but he'll just land with empty hop, turn around and get a grab. This builds on itself throughout games because if his opponent starts to expect the tomahawk grab, Hbox will just straight up hit them or do something else to further condition them. In this case, turning his back led to a pretty unique Luigi edge guard, but the implication of another bear or shine or just about anything can still linger in Eddie's head throughout the sequence. I like it's how insanely high level play, and I still have moments when I watch Hungry Bob. He relates where those. I feel like he's just a complete mind reader because he's conditioned his opponents so damn hard that they just play the way he wants. Good breakdown, jeez, just from that one interaction. Bro, I was, I think I was dead ass like 190 pounds here. God! Look, you can see my Adam's apple. Look at this. Look at this Juan. I'm wearing the same shirt. God, what happened? Oh, I just want. Oh! What happened? Hold on. The comparison. Can we compare? Oh, that's funny, man. That's actually funny as hell. Oh, where, where, where did the years go? Where, where did the time go? Fox is the crux of consistency. He's a player that you just expect to win because of that insane first place statistic I mentioned earlier. But even when he doesn't take home the W, he's almost always hitting top eight. Hbox will have off performances every now and again, like everybody the pop does, off video. <laughs> every single tournament he attends, but that's okay. The two through five spots on oh, 2019's man. are Wizrobe, Axe, Eleven, <laughs> and Mango. All of these players are certainly feared opponents, yes, but when it comes to the total package of who the biggest tournament threat is by the time this year ends, and perhaps even through 2020, I think Hungrybox is going to be in a class of his own. Genghis Wan is a wolf in sheep's clothing, or in this case, a, a fox. fox clothing. Oh. I think a seventh place finish at Genesis Black using a Puff's vision of Fox and a Puff's vision of Sheik. Chat, can we just appreciate that play for a second? Ready for this? I think I have never played Eddie Mexico's Luigi in my life, right? I'm trying to recover. A seventh place finish. He grabs me. I do know that Luigi can get a spike off this from playing net play, right? So I think to myself, shit, I better tech this, otherwise I'm dead. Right? So he gets the down air, right? Black. I tech that bitch, 
And what do I think? Well, you know what? I think I can still... When I'm playing Puff and Luigi um, up Bs me, I can crouch cancel that. So what if I crouch cancel again at 81? Can I just mash down on side of this? Using a Puff's vision of Fox and a Puff's vision of Sheik should be more than enough evidence to push the... Tell me that wasn't gross. Tell me that wasn't some of the, the grossest... Ugh. Black using a Puff's vision of Fox and a Puff's vision of Sheik should be more than enough evidence to push the haters back. Oh, and by the way... I tech it and then I air dodge. Vision of Fox and Chat. Fox clothing. I think a seven air dodge back on. Genesis. Tech instant air dodge upwards diagonally to land down while holding down right here. Down smash. And, a Puff's vision of Sheik and that's all she wrote. More than enough evidence to push the haters. All right. This guy is number one dirty. for a reason. His talent is undeniable, and even at a smaller event like this. Hungry Bucks just shows us how well a top player's skill translates across characters. For most Smash players, they simply can't survive facing off against Hungry Bucks. So when those players take their humble losses to the number one player in the world, they can now say that it wasn't just another Puff player that handed them that loss. It was a Fox and Sheik player too. The Genghis Khan song? Uh, and I'm gonna say this too, Noel, he's the guy in the white shirt right here. Um. Noel was playing so bad this set. This was uh he actually apparently I love Noel. Like we we played um we played a uh, uh, four square outside at Summit and we were talking. He, everyone in SoCal apparently <laughs> to this day roasts Noel for losing 2-0 to Genghis Juan in a Fox Dido. He they ro to this day they roast him. He would destroy me now if we played, but he just we, he just I just happened to be playing hot and he was playing horrible and so this started the legend of Genghis Juan um and it's just so funny dude because during the set you can see he's just shaking his head like in disbelief of the shit he's getting hit by but in the words of ultimate and every player that we always fight against that seems to get away with stuff and then they SD or they cyclone off the ledge or they miss fire off the ledge or they miss an up smash or they want to keep on trying to get me with a puff. Or they want to keep on pushing me to the top tier. Or they miss a punish on a rest. Or they miss everything else that's possible to make my life a little more difficult. In the words of those players, we take those. We always take those forever and ever in anything that we do. Not just Smash Bros. I'm talking about in cooking, in car repairs, and everything. We take those forever and ever. Burrito Boy, thank you very much for the, for the tier 1 of the Poco Loco. It's almost done. That's life. Fake it Thank till you, you so make it, chat. watching this episode, and hopefully you saw the full top eight for Genesis Black. It was a super entertaining event, so if you haven't checked it out yet, I'll leave a link to the stream in the description. This show and channel are supported by Patreon. If you want to be a channel producer, please check the link out and take advantage of some of the perks. Yeah, if you guys like Melee History content, Turn Down for Walt is actually super damn good. His Patreon's here. If this video goes on YouTube for this reaction, which it probably will, I'll definitely look at there too. Uh, amazing, amazing content creator, honestly. Good stuff.